Yeah, that just doesn't really make sense to me, guys. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions, and I want to talk about what has been going on on YouTube when it comes to the Idaho 4 case, because there's a whole lot of channels talking about how Brian Koberger could have actually been the DoorDash driver. I don't think so. I could be wrong, okay? I could be wrong, but I do not logically think it makes sense that Brian Koberger was the DoorDash driver. Let me explain the reasons why. This is based basically off of everything that we have been told by law enforcement and what we are being told is details in this case when it comes to him stalking them and having a target and having a specific victim. Okay, everyone who watches me knows that if that is the scenario, then I do believe that Maddie was his one and only intended target that night and unfortunately Kaylee and Xana and Ethan were happenstance stuff like that happens sometimes but there are a multitude of reasons why him being the door dash driver doesn't really make logical sense okay for one if he was the door dash driver that would in my logical brain make me believe that he would have gone and delivered the food and there was some sort of like crappy altercation or exchange of words between him said DoorDash driver and one of the victims who opened the door and could have just been completely rude and it just triggered him and he parked his car and he went inside and just went off okay complete spontaneity in that situation that takes away him being an incel, that takes away him being a stalker, that takes away everything, in my opinion. And I know that we haven't seen anything about the DoorDash driver actually being cleared of anything, but we know that they got the warrant for it. And they know that the information was like basically less than a 24 hour turnaround time and that they've already talked to the DoorDash driver. What I have believed this entire time and remembered hearing quite a few times is that the DoorDash driver went and spoke to the police on his own recognizance once he realized, well, once he or she, because we don't know, once he or she realized that 1122 King Road was one of their delivery destinations, that they went and talked to the police themselves. And to me, you can't have it both ways. You can't have him being everything I said before, an incel, having a target, having an intended victim, having an, obs uh, an obsession, an infatuation that went wrong, and him be the DoorDash driver. Because I really think about it, if he was the DoorDash driver, not only would he have literally been like just sitting around all night waiting for just that one address to come through and not taking any orders other than that address ever, ever, just so he could get that right one, but duh, you're a DoorDash driver, all of your data would put you there at the time of this, and you being the person that did this would be without a doubt. Without a doubt. And not only that, but we're being told that Brian Koberger is so vegan that he will not even allow his parents to use pots and pans that have previously cooked meat. So y'all think he's just going to be in the car bopping around all night with the smell of grilled cow just wafting up his nose for hours no that doesn't make any logical sense whatsoever and common sense in these things is the biggest thing that gets lost whenever these things become such a soap opera it does not make any logical sense to me that brian koberger could be the killer and the door dash driver it's one or the other Something else in this case I find interesting that I really do not see a lot of people talking about is the sheath and the actual DNA evidence that was found on it and the way all that came about. Now, I found a post on Twitter from Sleuthy, and she had a clip from the Megyn Kelly show where Megyn Kelly did an interview with this journalist. Now, look, let me tell you, I do not recognize this man but a bunch of people in the comments were not okay with this interview. And I'm going to have a link to the interview 
where this part that I'm about to bring up is talked about. But this was not a well-received interview. This guy's pretty rude. I don't. I got an off vibe from him as well, and apparently so did almost like 95% of her viewers on that video. But this tidbit of information, if true, is oh, it's just it's something in my brain that I can't let go of, and I'm not gonna bring this up now. Because I think that it might be something conspiratorial. I mean, it's something that would make you think that, honestly. Until we actually read the first responder reports, then all this stuff going on about pain and all this conspiratorial stuff about them, I'm not getting into. I'm just not. I want to read the first responders reports. I don't care uh, so much about these reports being written by these detectives that were told stories and didn't walk the scene originally. They're seeing things after stuff has been moved and more people have come in and tape and pointers and markers and all kinds of things have been sprayed and photos taken. Okay, I want to read the first responders reports before I start getting into all that. But the portion of the Megan Kelly show is about the knife sheath originally going to an Idaho forensic lab and them finding not a damn thing on it. Nothing, nothing. Then the man states they sent it off to a cold case lab in Woodlands, Texas. Well, I literally just went to Google and typed in cold case forensic lab, Woodlands, Texas. Well, a facility called Othram Labs popped up. Now, Sleuthy tweeted to them asking if there was a way that they could verify that they were the lab that actually found the DNA on the knife sheath. And according to this interview on Megyn Kelly's show, it was indeed touch DNA. Well, touch DNA is not the most concrete evidence, guys. That's a little bit of an issue for me. Because if this person was savagely stabbing someone to death, there would be more than just a little tea tiny micro speck of touch DNA on the snap. Now, granted, whoever did this was apparently completely dressed in black and all the way done. And we keep hearing about how he wears gloves. And from what it sounds like, he doubles them up from the fact that whenever he was detained, the clothing description showed two pairs of black gloves, not just one. So it is possible that he was so careful and cleaned this thing so meticulously before only carrying it with gloved hands only that the teeny tiniest speck of touch DNA was left on the snap. But then why would he have been so stupid as to take his phone with him and turn it off after he left? Why would he have been so stupid to make all these other mistakes that someone with his education and background no way in hell would cognitively make. So I'm going to say again, just like with him being or not being the DoorDash driver, you can't have both in this scenario either. So he's either this intense criminal mastermind that cleaned everything so well and kept himself so contained during this incident that he left only a little tea tiny speck of touch DNA in the entire three story house. Or he's a complete moron that not only does what we just said about the phone, but then also returns to the crime scene. I just don't think that you can have both here, guys. So while, yes, I'm glad that they're claiming that they have DNA on this knife, I just don't trust how valid this information is going to be. There being touch DNA on the knife sheath could simply be because the actual murderer was around Brian Koberger right before the murders happened. And that's just the reality of this little situation. And I'm not stating that Brian Koberger is completely innocent, but we also know we have to look at everything and we have to think logically. And that's what my logical brain is telling me about this newest chaos going around on YouTube. But I guess that's it for now. I just wanted to give my two cents on the current situation because it seems there's a lot of channels talking about this. And quite a few channels think it's possible that he was the DoorDash driver. And I'm going to say again, I could be wrong. 
but I just don't think it makes any logical sense. All right. See y'all.